Today we're going to be talking about solving systems of equations. And I start out the lesson with a cartoon, and you have Paige struggling with some math. And she asks her brother Peter how to do the math problem. And then Peter goes over and puts the actual equations here into a real world context. And then Paige is easily able to solve it. And then Peter walks away saying, you aren't stupid, Paige, just weird. And Paige still doesn't understand um, how to solve the problem. So that's kind of a fun joke for you guys. Okay. Solving system of equations. One way to solve a system of equations is to use a graph. So graphing these, if we pull out this first equation, let's solve that first equation for y. So we have 2x minus 3y equals 3. If I'm solving for y, I'm going to add the 3y over, subtract the 3, so I have minus 3 is equal to 3y. Then I'm going to divide each and every term by 3. So we have y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. So now I'm going to plot that graph. And now drawing that line. And obviously you guys are going to be using a straight edge when drawing in your lines. The bottom equation, solving the bottom equation for y. We have y plus 2 is equal to x. So if I solve, we get that. So our y-intercept here is negative 2. I go up 1 over 1 up one over one, up one over one. And drawing in that line. So now you have to tell me what the intersection point. The intersection point or the solution is the point where the two lines intersect. So that is the point three, one. And remember, you can always check your answer by plugging that in for x, that in for y, 3 in for x, 1 in for y, and making sure it works in both equations. There are some special types of linear systems. We have, and I want you guys to write down this chart, consistent and independent, where these two lines are intersecting and there's one solution. So you could think about this as if they have different slopes. Okay, different slopes. When you're consistent and dependent, it's the same line. So same slope, same y-intercept, so same B. Okay? And both of these types, you're going to have at least one solution. So when you're consistent, you have at least one solution. And either you're independent, where they're completely different lines, or dependent, the same line. And then you have inconsistent, where these are parallel lines. Remember, parallel lines are going to have the same slope, but here they're going to have different y-intercepts or different b's. Okay, classify each system and determine the number of solutions. So solve each one of the equations for y. Solving the top one for y, I'm going to subtract 6. And then I'm going to divide by 2, so I get 1 half x minus 3. Taking this one and solving for y, I'm going to start with 
I'm going to subtract. I'm going to add these 6y over and subtract the 18. So basically reverse where those two are. And then I'm going to divide everything by 6. I apologize, 6. So we have y equals 1 half x minus 3. So here we have the same slope, same y-intercept, they're the exact same line. So that's going to be consistent because there's at least one solution. And then dependent. Dependent means that essentially this, they are the same line. Okay, our other example. This top equation solving for y. I'm going to subtract the 4x over. The bottom equation. I'm going to subtract the 1 over. Now notice they have different y-intercepts but the same slope. So therefore, these are going to have no solution or in consistent. Okay. Now you can also use your calculator to find the intersection of two lines. So what you're going to do is make sure that you first solve each one of the equations for y. So solving that equation for y, we just subtract the 43 over. Subtract, solving this equation for y, I'm going to basically switch the place of the y and the 15, so I get y equals 18x plus 15. Now you're going to graph these on the same screen. You're going to graph one of them in y1, graph one of them in y2. Adjust the window so that you see the point of intersection. You're going to have to adjust your window. Um, and then you go to second trace, which is the calculate menu under our graph. And then you look for number five, the intersection, and then hit enter three times. And I'm going to bring up a calculator and show you guys how to do this. Okay, so we're going to use our calculator to find the intersection of two lines. So go to y equals and type in the first equation in y1 and the second equation in y2. And I've already done that, so you might want to pause the video right now, type those in your calculator, and then come back. Now, always start with a standard window. So I'm going to do a zoom 6. That's a standard window and you have to adjust it so that you can see the point of intersection. It's kind of hard for me to see that point of intersection. So I'm going to go back to my window and adjust it a little bit. I'm going to make my x min 0. x max, let's leave that at 10. y min, I think I needed to adjust that. I think I'm going to go negative 15. And then y max is 10. So now let's go to graph. Let's see if we can find our intersection point. Yeah, that graph looks like right there is going to be where our intersection point is. But we want to calculate that specifically. So we go to second, trace, brings up our calculate menu under our graph. We want to choose number five. Now first curve, this, ha this is if there's more than two curves you're trying to find the intersection of. Our first curve, that's the first curve we wanted. Second curve, yeah, that's the second curve that we wanted. Guess, now this is if there's more than one intersection point on our grid. But we only have one point of intersection, so you can just press enter again. And you see, let's round to three decimal places, so it's 1.289 and negative 8.2.
Okay, so using our calculator, we found our intersection, and let's round this to three decimal places, 1.289 and negative 8.2. So the calculator is going to be super helpful in helping us find our points of intersection. Now another way to solve by hand is to use substitution. Now this is super easy if you have your coefficients on your x or your y, if one of them is 1, or you can easily get it to be 1. So if you look at this top piece here, what I can do is I can add the y over and subtract the 13 over to get y equals 3x minus 13. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to substitute that y value into our other one. So we have 2x plus 2y equals negative 10. So I'm going to take and substitute this in to the other equation. And now you have an equation where you just go through and solve this like we normally would. Oh, I'm sorry, that's in 8x is equal to a 16. Therefore, x is going to equal 2. Now that you know your x-coordinate, remember we're going to give our answers an ordered pair. If x is 2, you now plug in the value of 2 for x in one of the two equations. Plug it into the one where you've already solved for y to get your y value. So I have 6 minus 13, y is going to be equal to negative 7. Okay, and make sure that you have these steps written down and the example written down. Next is elimination. So with elimination, what you want to keep in mind is you want to multiply one or both of the equations by a number so that they contain opposite terms, meaning that the coefficient on the x's is going to be the same, just one's positive and one's negative. And I'm going to eliminate that x. So for the top equation, you have to think about what could I multiply, what coefficient do I have to have for both of those x's if I want it to go away? Keep in mind that what you want is you want essentially the least common denominator between 3 and 2, so that's 6. In order to make this whole equation have a coefficient of 6 for the x, I need to multiply, I'm going to multiply this one by a negative 2. So when I go and I multiply by a negative 2, I get negative 6x. Now be careful, make sure you multiply every term by negative 2. The bottom equation, I need the same coefficient on the x, so I'm going to multiply by a 3. And make sure you're multiplying every term by 3. Now we add the equations. When you add the equations, one variable should go away, which it does. We have negative y equals a positive 5, so therefore y is going to equal negative 5. Now we give our answer in a coordinate form. Now you need to pick, pick one of your two original equations, not one of the ones that you multiplied by, because those are bigger coefficients to work with. And you're going to plug in negative 5 for y in one of the questions. So I'm going to choose the bottom one just because those are a little bit of a smaller number. So I have 2x plus 3 times a negative 5 is going to equal a negative 9. Or a 2x minus 
15 is equal to a negative 9. So a 2x is going to equal 6. So therefore, x is going to be equal to 3. So now we have our answer of 3, negative 5. Okay, and I am going to be having some applications. So Lancaster Woodworks Furniture buys two types of outdoor wooden chairs. Rocking chairs sell for $265, and an Adirondack chair with footstool sells for $320. The books show that last month the business earned $13,930 for the 48 outdoor chairs they sold. Okay. So let's make an X and a Y. Okay, what, how many of each chairs were sold? So your X is gonna be one type of chair, the Y is gonna be the other. Let's make X our rocking chair. And Y, our Adirondack chair. Okay, so they had a total of 48 chairs. So the number of rocking plus the number of Adirondack chair is going to equal 48. Now talk about the money. We have $265 times the amount of, of rocking chairs plus 320 times the amount of Adirondack chairs is going to equal what we earned for our money. I'm going to do substitution. I'm going to solve this equation for y and substitute in. All right. And now it's just a matter of going through and solving. And with these big of numbers, I would let you guys have your calculator just so you guys know. Combining the 265 and the 320, I get negative 55x equals, and then I'm going to subtract that 15,360 over to the other side and get negative 1430. Then I divide and I get x to be equal to 26. So we have 26 rocking chairs that we sold. Now what you're going to do is you're going to plug in 26 into that equation. So we have 48 minus 26 to get you your grand total of 22 Adirondack chairs. And that's our answer. Okay, so your lesson questions, you're going to solve each system of equations uh, for number one. Number two, you're going to classify, and then number three, you have a word problem example. And please make sure those are submitted on time.